Hey everyone, Talia just got a small rework, but it was an awesome one. Her abilities are more fun to use, are more powerful, and just make more sense now. She has insane carry potential through damage, controlling space, roaming, all of that good stuff. The thing is, Talia isn't that easy of a champion to just pick up and play with, as her abilities can feel a bit awkward at first. But not to worry, with this guide you will be able to pick her up very fast, as we're going to cover everything in this guide, ranging from her playstyle, combos, tips and tricks, basically everything you need. But before we do that, let's be honest, this is you playing your 10th game of League of Legends solo queue, and this is a picture of your match history. But we can change that at skillcap.com, link in the description below. Now back to the video. Alright, so first let's talk about Talia's playstyle. This champion really excels at controlling space, especially with the charge to her E. Her E now stuns anyone that dashes through it, and we all know how much mobility is in this game nowadays. If the champions with dashes don't respect your E, they take a ton of damage and get stunned. Not only do they make it stun, but it goes so far now that it really takes up so much space. That's not the only reason she controls space well though. Her wall can cut fights in half, or block people off while you finish a kill. And they made it so if you take damage on the wall, you don't get pushed off like before. The best part of Talia's strengths though, especially this version of her, is her damage output now. Oh man, it's crazy. This is because of how the worked ground works, and we will get into that in a minute. But basically, she has non-stop damage, literally. Her Q cooldown goes to one second very early in the game, and you can just spam. If you're fed, you're a machine gun, and the enemy team is forced to try and kill you. So the assassins try to jump in, but they get stunned by your E and killed. Her last main strength is her ability to roam with the move speed from her passive and the semi-global ult, and this is something she's always had. This lets you make plays all around the map, and she doesn't need an ult that doesn't damage because of how insane her damage output already is. Now that we know what makes Talia so strong, let's talk a bit about her power curve, as it's a really important thing to understand to be successful. Talia has been hard to balance in mid lane in the past because her Q was AoE and pushed the waves really easily, which made her laning way too strong. But then when they made her Q single target, she wasn't played in mid anymore, so they brought that back, and her Q is AoE again. To balance this, they made her extremely weak in the first 5 levels of the game. She might actually be the weakest early game champion when it comes to fighting power, but she still has very good wave clear, which is all she needs to get through the early stages. The way her Q works on worked ground now is much better for her laning than before. If you use Q on worked ground like this, Talia throws a boulder instead, which slows, does a lot more damage, costs less mana, and reduces your Q cooldown by 50%. It also makes the worked ground disappear, so no more of that awkward clunky feeling of not being able to use meaningful cues when there were too many worked grounds around you. The boulder feels amazing to use, but when it comes to her power curve, basically all you need to know is use your wave clear to get you through the very early levels because once you hit level 7, 8, or 9 you really start to pop off. You don't need to actually scale to like 3 items like a mouse or something. You just need some points in your queue and you start shredding the wave and enemy champions. Now let's all talk about using Talia Q since it's her primary damage tool. A small change they made to her W was it doesn't do damage anymore. This leaves her with only E and Q as damage dealing abilities, with Q being the main one. First, remember that it's AoE, so when players try and hide behind minions, you can use the minion to get some poke or proc mana flow band. They have to be pretty close though. With 4 points in Q, which you will get at level 7, your Q cooldown will be 4 seconds. But remember, your Q has a decently long animation since you throw multiple rocks. So by the time it's done, it's actually only 2 seconds. In this clip, McBay's is on Talia versus Pantheon, and when Pantheon walks up, McBay's first uses Q, and notice when using it, he's only moving side to side. This is because you can't change your direction when using this ability. It might feel weird at first, but you will get used to it. Then, once the Q is done, he uses E to slow the Pantheon, and W to push him into the rocks. This also stuns as if he dashed through them. By this point, McBay's can use Q again, and this time it's on the worked ground from the previous one. So he can throw the boulder. Watch the cooldown and the damage from the boulder. The damage was high, it slowed, and the cooldown was 2 seconds on Q instead of 4. So then he can follow up with another Q almost immediately, and then run Pantheon down for the kill. This will be a very common combo you do, where you use Q, stun them, then use a boulder, and then Q again. And remember, that was with 0 cooldown reduction and only 4 points in Q, so it wasn't maxed. Once you get it maxed and have one item, your Q technically has a cooldown, but not really because by the time you're done throwing that last rock, it's back up again. 
And one last thing for the Q, which is just a cool trick. You can use Q on worked ground, then flash forward to buffer it like an Ari charm, which looks like this. This is really hard to react to and lets you use the boulder at ranges that you otherwise wouldn't be able to. Which brings us to the next two abilities, W and E. You basically use these together almost every time. They can be used for self-peel or for getting picks and making plays. In this clip, McBays is hiding behind this wall as the enemy team walks up. Then he uses W first and E and Q as they are flying, so they both get stunned and take a ton of damage. And by the time his Q is done, the cooldown is up and he can use the boulder like we just talked about. Then after coming out of the hourglass, he starts chasing the vein. This is where something small is very important. Sometimes you want to use E first, then use W. Here is the first example. By using E first, if they try to dash out, they get stunned and it slows them which can make landing W easier. Sometimes you want to use E first, then use W. That's why McBay's flashes and uses E right away and Vayne tumbles out and gets stunned. Then she's forced to flash. In this next example, it's the same concept, where if McBay's just tried to use W into E on Vayne, it would be really easy for Vayne to dodge the W with a tumble, so it's better to put E down first, then look for W like this. Then he can use the boulder to slow the Kale and finish her off for the double kill. The times you want to use W first are when they can't see you, or if the timing on the W is crucial. A perfect example of this is if you're against Zed. In this clip, McBase is against Zed, and Zed walks up and uses W, E, and Q like this. It's very important McBase doesn't use W or E at all right now, because that will give Zed the chance to jump in with no way of pushing him off. So McBase just uses Q, and as expected, Zed swaps to the W, looking to ult McBase if he uses W. So McBase just runs towards his tower, ready for Zed to ult. When he doesn't, now McBays can turn and use Q, but again, he needs to hold E and W for now. Zed turns and uses ult, and the timing here is important, so he can't use E then W. He needs to W first so it hits Zed right as he comes out, then use E to stun for the free kill under tower. So as you can see, the way you use your E and W can be the difference between a good or bad Talia. They are very strong abilities, especially when used together. Now, there are going to be times where you want to use W without E, or when you just don't have E available. In this case, McBays is being ulted on by Pantheon, and he already used his E to try and stop Vayne or Talon to jump in. So he uses W on the Pantheon as he lands, which pushes him off during the jump for his stun, and lets him survive this. Alright, and just like how sometimes you have to use W without E, there are some situations where you want to use E without W. In this example, McBase and his support are getting jumped on in mid lane. For now, there's no reason to use W and E since he's just trying to kite away while doing damage, so he's just using Q. As all three of them run up in a line like this, this is when it's a really good time to use E, as it will do some damage to all three and slow them. If Graves tries to dash in, he will be stunned. If Zed tries to ult, McBase can W him into the rocks. It's just controlling a ton of space, which is one of the main strengths of Talia like we talked about earlier. Then if we slow it down, watch how Braum uses ult and that causes a small knock up on the Zed and Zillion and makes them get stunned by the Talia E. Then Jax jumps in with counter strike for another stun and the skirmish was won with ease. So even if your team moves enemies through the rock field, they will get stunned as well. It's safe to say it's a really strong ability. For the last ability, we have her ultimate. The wall has a few uses and is even stronger now since you can take damage while on it. So if you're getting ganked for example, like in this clip, as long as you haven't taken damage yet, you can ult out. But it works the same as before, as in you press R once to just throw the wall out and press it twice to actually ride along it. When it comes to jumping off the wall, it's much more accurate and easier than before. You just need to right click where you want to jump off to and that's where you will go. And remember, by pressing R again after getting off, you can bring the wall down. It's really useful for roaming of course, but using it to control space in a fight is where the real strength lies. In this clip, McBase is chasing the Kale who flashes over the wall, so he ults over, then uses the wall to keep himself safe from the Darius and Talon, which also sets him up for the rest of the fight using the concepts we already went over. With that, he gets 3 kills here without even being touched. To wrap things up, let's talk about runes, builds, and skill order. For skills, it's simple, max Q, then E. They are your only damage tools. For runes, Electrocute seems to be the best so far. It's strong for laning and burst in fights as you can easily one-shot people as Talia. Secondary runes can be Inspiration with Cookies and Time Warp Tonic, or Sorcery with Mana Flow and Transcendence. For builds, you can actually build all four of the Mana Mythics for different situations. If they're really squishy, Ludens and Everfrost can be good, with Ludens doing more damage of course, but harder to use. If they're champions who build a lot of health, Leandries is amazing. If they have a lot of dive, Crown is good. 
Second item, you will be going Shadow Flame most of the time because he gives health and flat magic pen. But if you want to try out a build McBay's recommends, he likes to get a tier on his first base, then builds Mythic into Rylai's, then finishes tier. Rylai's is really insane on Talia's Q and lets you kite the enemy endlessly. A build like this is mainly good when they don't have a lot of dashes. For fourth item, you will normally want a Void or Death Cap, depending on how much MR they have. We recommend a tier because Talia uses a lot of mana, but it's not totally necessary. Just try it out and see what you like. Alright guys, before we wrap this up, let's tell you a little more about skill cap. So, we offer a 5 division rank up guarantee, and think that's a pretty crazy thing to offer. It's like a gym membership guaranteeing you'll get ripped. Your local gym would go bust if they offered that, right? Not us. We've offered this for years because our service really does work. It works so well, in fact, that we're able to produce by far the largest catalog of premium league guides on the internet. We add over 20 videos a week. With over 1,600 guides curated into over 100 courses, no one can compare. We've also sent challenger players into ELO Hell 714 times and counting, where they commentate how to carry live. They also respond to all questions asked. Sign up today for as little as $6.99 a month if you are serious about improving. Alright guys, that's going to wrap up this guide on Talia. She's very fun and way stronger than before, so we hope this video helped and you enjoy her as much as we have. But that's going to bring us to the end of this one. Thanks for watching.